Hello, welcome to the very first episode of the Zero Strategy Podcast. Uh, unfortunately, we had some slight audio issues at the beginning of the podcast, so we missed the intro. So I'm going to give you a little intro right now. Uh, this podcast is uh, got five hosts that are going to rotate in and out each week. Uh, we're going to be discussing how to get a start on Twitch, on Mixer, YouTube, and content creation as a whole. Uh, we're going to be talking about all sorts of topics like that each week. Uh, we're also going to be talking about games and anything else that we think is funny or interesting. Uh, we really hope you enjoy it. Uh, the hosts on the podcast, we have Java Monkey, we have Cyber Wolf, we have the Mighty Kibbles, we have that guy Cod, and myself, Condi Fly. Uh, again, some of the audio got messed up, <clears throat> so we'll be jumping in. Um, literally, we miss about a couple of minutes, and again, uh, this won't happen again. Thank you very much. Um, and if you enjoy, please do make sure to check us out live on Twitch, www.twitch.tv slash zero strategy podcast. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, I don't I don't really have anyone that got me inspired. It's just just my friend told me about it. I was like, that sounds kind of cool. And I did it in my really, really shitty, dirty room at my <laughs> old house for my first couple streams. And we moved and got a little better. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Cool. And then uh, to finish this off for the intro here, Cyber as well. My name is Cyberwolf, aka Billy. Um, started on Twitch probably about four years ago. Um, then I moved to Mixer uh, around about two years ago. Uh, I play, well, I'm I'm classed as the the whole variety streamer, but I think each one of us always kind of pegs ourselves with that, and then we always play one game. It's Destiny. <laughs> like I, I don't know why that happens, but you know. Um, but I stream like Apex, uh, Destiny, uh, mainly like FPS games. Um, I remember getting into Twitch thinking you can make it big and, you know, <laughs> everybody sees like Shroud and Ninja and all that kind of stuff. Um, but like I, I kept on doing it mainly because I got to meet people, uh, met these, well, most of these amazing people in real life. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much my story. Awesome. Uh, one other thing we should say, chat, or a couple of quick things before we get any further into this um, for any listeners. Uh, we may talk to like we may not use our full names like constantly like as like cyber said his name's billy my name's andrew manu is that guy called things like that so we may we may talk to each other with those names from time to time just to avoid confusion uh another quick thing as well chat we do have a sort of q a portion that we're hoping to do um exclamation point question in chat i should have put it in the title but i didn't um but that's fine so exclamation point question and uh, you'll see at the top of the chat box um where it says stream chat there's another room called questions if you have anything that you're dying to ask any of the hosts here uh, or just the podcast as a whole pop a question in there you can do that at any point what we may do is we may pick them out as we go through or we may at the end just grab a bunch of questions and pretty much just go through them that way uh so yeah that's uh, an option if anyone's interested feel free to ask us stuff um but yeah we've got a few things to talk about this week so um cod do you want to run us through some of the the topics we have yeah so first topic we're going to have today is discuss how to get started on twitch mixer or like content creation overall and we have like a little a few little points for that like branding communities networking stuff like that um then we have stop worrying about the growth you know don't worry about your numbers and stuff what you can do to get that out of your head and then the last point we have is consuming content and learning stuff from it so if you just watch a stream and you see something you really like in that stream you just you know maybe do something similar don't like do the same but like do something similar you like yeah yeah for sure okay well i mean i can start a little bit of like getting started so like it's i think a lot of people think that you need to have this amazing pc and a great webcam brilliant mic and all this stuff to uh to get started on streaming which is so not true um myself personally i just started with a ps4 streaming straight to twitch from the ps4 um and you know built it up gradually from there um i have seen people that will go out and invest a lot of money in a, a crazy setup and then get bored and realize that twitch isn't for them i think like streaming content creation that kind of thing it's one of those sort of hobbies or interests that looks 
so easy and appealing to start off with but then once you get into it you realize that there's actually a lot of work goes in behind the scenes and uh and trying to make these things work so my advice is always to start off very 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 limited and just build up from there uh, i don't know what you guys think i mean i've i've seen streamers streaming straight off ps4 that built up huge audiences just purely from doing that yeah i mean one example for that is i remember destiny one i don't know who knows but like most of you probably know real crafty right mm -hmm. he yeah. streamed on playstation like straight from the playstation for ages and he built up like a really big community from that like he used to get back in like destiny one year one year two days he used to get two thousand viewers already straight from his previous store only and like i totally agree that you don't need like the biggest setup for it like i started streaming from playstation as well and it's like totally enough i mean use what the playstation gives to you you're gonna save a lot of money because that everything else is gonna be really expensive so yeah i agree on that part i think yeah. one of the one of the biggest things is people expect that if you spend let's say five thousand dollars or pounds on like a big setup that your content doesn't matter after that I think content is one of the biggest things that if you invest your time in that and not the setup, you're going to be way more successful. I have to 100% agree with Billy. I think the core fundamentals of what you're doing on Twitch is you've got to be producing, to use the term content, you've got to be producing good content. You've got to be, you've got to have an engaging personality. You've got to be regular and like consistent with your stream schedule. And you've got to be streaming something that people want to watch. Like if you're an enjoyable person, if your personality comes across well, if you're genuine to yourself, and you're just enjoying a game that's going to be the main thing if you're getting those few extra pixels on your stream or that extra bit of fps or expanding your bit rate a bit more it's nice it's the polish but what is the core fundamentals of your stream the things that you should really focus on first and i think as andrew's been saying it's easy to focus on oh if i get this big setup i've got everything i need and then i can work on it from there i think if you're going to start streaming just press the button you'll be nervous you'll be there's always nerves when you first start streaming and you will get more comfortable with it. But that's the best thing to do is whatever you're streaming on, just start, try and get comfortable with streaming, get to know the kind of games you want to play, the kind of stuff you enjoy, and uh, start building a community and get those sort of core fundamentals on the go first before you even start to worry about, oh, this nicer webcam, this expensive lighting, this PC that when I turn it on, I can hear it punch a hole in space time. <laughs> like stuff like that is, but if, if you are ever fortunate enough to make it as a bigger streamer and you're looking way far down the line maybe those things are worth investing in on a as the polish but the core of it is making sure you're enjoying what you're doing and building a community and producing good content yeah it's about you as a person rather than the the quality of the because you can have the best looking stream you know the most pixels and the best audio quality but like if you don't know what you're doing you don't know how to engage with a stream it doesn't get you anywhere right it's it's yeah, about yeah it's about what i think you can a, do a lot of people look over the fact that you are your brand like eventually games come and go and pcs come and go but if people don't associate you with that content i don't think you've got yeah. much chance mm. you need to be like focusing on you the one thing that i will say about the, like the whole setup thing is decent audio you don't need a webcam but decent audio somebody can hear you well and it's not like punching a, a hole in the space-time continuum. I, li I like that analogy. I'm going to use that. I'm going to steal that. That one's mine now. Uh, um, I'll demand royalties every time you use that. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know. Like I say, I think people get too focused on throwing everything into, like, having, like, literally, like, 50 screens, the, the lighting, all that kind of stuff. But if you focus on yourself, is that make, making you that content? I think you've got you got the world ahead of you especially on twitch and mixer not not yeah. to mention like facebook gaming youtube like there's, there's a lot of streaming services out there now yeah a lot yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> more popping up like every day by the looks of things yeah yeah it's popular right now um okay so like on that point you said you know good audio what do you guys think is that the most important thing to invest in first or would you say maybe webcam or you know what do you think is the, the most important thing to to start off with well i would say if you have like if you stream straight from playstation and your internet can like handle it you know when you have like not that good of an internet your playstation quality gets like lower on your stream yeah. 
But if you don't, and it can handle like the 720 or like 60 FPS, I feel like the mic if should be one of the first things if it's not really that good. Because like you said, audio quality goes over like everything. Not over everything, but like it's it's good to have good quality so people can understand you from your, like, your mic. Yeah. I have seen streamers that have really good quality face cam, but their mic is just like not that good and makes me as a viewer not want to like engage as much because i see like i can't really understand the guy you know what i mean mm. and it's like you know that's it's not the most important thing but i think it's one of the most the more important things you need to get going me, on me as a viewer if i if i literally go into a stream and they say like this, this and like hi everybody, everybody. <laughs> that is the, I, I literally switch off like i cannot yeah. deal with that um, they don't need like a big fancy webcam. They don't need to spend something on like a DSLR and and all that kind of stuff. Cause literally, well, a lot of streamers their their webcam is like tiny, and you you can see them perfectly well. But honestly, that is the first thing I do. If somebody has really really bad like audio, I I just can't watch them. It's almost painful to watch. And there's a lot yeah. of things within OBS to actually stop that and people don't take the time to research it <coughs> excuse me sorry yeah i mean i think i think like you say the research overall is a huge thing um i don't know about you guys so i still use the logitech c920 for my webcam which is like the webcam that every streamer starts with it is yep. you know very affordable two of them now. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it but the, the thing is it took me it, it's not just a case of plug it in and it goes and it works you have to sit down and do a bit of research and try and make it look good and i can't tell you how many times i've sat down for an hour and i've said okay i'm going to try and improve this make this look better and then the next stream people will say oh did you get a new camera that's happened like three or four times and i've never changed the camera i've just made small improvements to it to make it look better things like i didn't i didn't know you could change the resolution on this camera at first mm -hmm. so i was streaming in a little square box at some weird resolution and i couldn't change it and it was just a weird shape and then I, I realized I could change that and it made it all better. And then, you know, just the basic filters in OBS can improve how it looks. You know, the, if the webcam itself has got software that you can adjust things. Uh, even lighting in your room is a huge big thing. If you've got good lighting, you can make a bad camera still look really, really good. Uh, and I, I'm in no rush to upgrade this camera. I mean, like, it's done me for years. So, and that was cheap, easy, and, you know, it just takes a bit of time to do that research. This is like $35, $40 exactly it's not yeah, a lot i guess that's the one that i'm currently using right now my only complaint test point in case today right before we went live all my settings reset which was fantastic i was like oh good all this work i've done has disappeared but um <laughs> i think that's just me being an old man with technology but um yeah no it's a great starting out camera but to go back to what billy was saying audio quality is a huge thing like as long as you've got like the strong fundamentals of your game's frame rate and bit rate is solid it doesn't take a lot for a machine to run a solid bit rate and frame rate. Like, you drop the graphics, no one's going to complain as long as the stream quality is solid. Um, so if you're on a lower end machine, you're just starting out. Or even if you're on console, you don't need to worry about that. But good audio sound is huge. Background noise can be a big thing as well. Sound of your keyboard picking up quite loudly, like learning noise gates, mm. learning sort of um, like if you need to add gain, if you need to like reduce the volume of your mic, making sure you're not peaking too much on it, things like that. Just making sure you've got good crisp audio because as a viewer myself and i know for a lot of viewers sometimes you'll be watching a stream while you're gaming you're not always going to be staring straight at the screen audio is the thing that is constantly there and constantly transmitting so making sure you've got good clean crisp audio is a huge part of it yeah a ton That's of people a question work. yeah a question no no so uh big jack says if you all got into a hundred meter race who would win I i'm gonna take this it was me 100 percent i'm I, winning this uh, <laughs> i'm built for speed <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I, have to say it's uh, definitely not me <laughs> you're nimble what do you mean i have little legs i just i, I couldn't keep up <laughs> I, I i think billy's got the like he's taller than me so i think he's got the advantage there but yeah i'll be close <laughs> Yeah, and I'm asthmatic, Dale, so... you, don't throw him under the bus, Dale, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I would only make it halfway down that, that 100 meter track and I'd, yeah, I'd collapse. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I think that was Connie admitting he was small. Nah, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, clip it. I have short legs, but the rest of me is super tall. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> your old torso i like it absolutely <laughs> um but yeah i mean anything else we want to touch on for like getting started i mean i guess the thing is the takeaway i would say is just start right don't sit and wait till you've got the perfect artwork and the perfect you know setup just start streaming um you know bear in mind that yeah a lot of people do lurk like you said so if you can focus a little bit on audio try and get that audio right because that's gonna you know I, i'm the same like i think it was java said i like to sit and play games and have streams up in the background so i'm just listening to people um so that's a kind of a key thing there um and yeah do your research um one of the big things as well is just like i've said it so many times but twitch etiquette right and i'm sure <laughs> you guys have can talk on this a little bit as well like yep. twitch etiquette yep. is huge if you decide i'm going to start streaming but you've never watched twitch you've never spent any time on twitch it's difficult because twitch is its own little world and i'm sure the same is true with mixer i haven't spent a ton of time outside of your stream billy but like there's there's a there is an etiquette there's a set of sort of serious or not serious but there, there's a there's a, a set of rules really that you kind of follow unwritten rules almost um i don't know you guys want to go any deeper in any of that like any spe specific sort of etiquettes that you think need to be mentioned well one of the one of the biggest things for me is obviously mixer has a, a platform which I, I know twitch does now for uh, cool streams mm. one of the biggest things pet peeves for me is when somebody is obviously streaming with somebody else and they'll talk to their chat without muting yep that drives yeah. me insane it, <laughs> it takes two seconds to either set up a macro like mute it on whatever audio interface you've got my biggest thing that i can honestly say is if you are speaking to your chat exclusively and not the streamers mute yourself because yep. <laughs> it drives me insane <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's for like a cool stream you're playing with another streamer the last thing that they want to hear is oh hey thanks for the follow oh hi and you're talking to your chat is i was guilty of it when i first started like i i was bad for it particularly if i was even just if i was playing with friends that weren't streaming you know again i was straight off of playstation so i had just the one mic to talk to people and it, yeah. like it's much easier on pc things like that you can just mute like the discord call or whatever you're using um but yeah i was guilty of it and like i, I cringe now when i think back to that like how horrible it must have been for people playing games with me to hear me just talk away to chat but yeah i'd say that's definitely a big one um, well, i think there's a clever balance there just on your point about when you're playing with people who aren't streaming mm. i think what i've been trying to do more recently which i think has been really good is if i'm playing with friends who aren't streaming for things like follow alerts sub alerts bits whatever um hosts you obviously want to mute and just talk exclusively to them and thank them but if you're you've got your chat going and people are talking about things i think it's really good to platform that to the people you're playing with as well where you can connect that over and say okay so chad has posed this question what do you think of this like they're asking about like for example with borderlands recently like i'm playing one character someone else is playing another someone in chat asks about that character you can pause that discussion and open conversation with the people you're playing with i think it's a balancing act and there's a nuance to it but if you can get it right it can definitely be a good way to get people engaged and get everyone involved you don't want to create that division between you and the people you're playing with and your chat there as well you want to have everyone talking together and mesh together there yeah yep 100 percent uh Wolfie does say, um, what's your advice on networking for new streamers slash content creators? And I think that kind of goes with, uh, like, starting up, like, starting your, your channel completely fresh. I think a lot of people think that viewers will just instantly come to you no matter what. One thing to remember, Shroud streamed to himself for a year before he started to get big. I think networking like not expecting twitch and mixer and every other streaming platform that they owe you viewers you need to make sure that you're in it for the right reasons you need to basically go around people within the community the games that you're playing speak to people create friendships and that to me anyway if if i network i see that tenfold back because people actually see that you want you enjoy their content and they come over if they excuse me enjoy your content on the back end of it it's great but network 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 <laughs> it is the biggest thing that has helped me out on my channel anyway 100 percent. don't just expect free things <laughs> <laughs> okay but to go a bit more into that what is networking like break down how you network what, what we do 
Well, for me personally, I go on other people's streams and I'll support them by either chatting, uh, just leaving a lurk. Um, one of the biggest things that I see in a return is building a community. If you just stream and then come off, then nobody's going to stick around. If you try and engage with them, like what I've seen, uh, like each and every one of you guys in, in your own streams is you'll ask how the day went. And then when they retort, you'll then go dive into it deeper and say, oh, well, yeah, tell me about that. Like, don't just go, oh, thanks. And then go back to focusing on the, the game that you're playing. Like, try and engage with people. Try and network uh, that way. And, I mean, personally, it, it works for me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. For, like, example, like I said, I, I started really, like, watching Twitch when I came into andrew's chat and i was like oh i just played you you know and then from that point on i was in the stream more often like more often and often and at some point we were just like you want to play games let's play some games and then we just like play games started like doing streams together and stuff like that and that's how it like can go with like networking you just go into a streamer's chat you talk to him regularly at some point you maybe like shoot them a message and be like hey you want to play some games uh, I've really been wanting to play some games with you lately, so why not, you know? Yeah. That's how it can go. Yeah. yeah, you make friends. That's that's literally what, what it boils down to in my book. Make friends. Yeah, like, I'm always loath to use the term networking <clears throat> mm. because, I don't know, it's become such a buzzword nowadays. But 100%, like, the biggest thing is um, there there is a there is a way that some people view Twitch as a game, and there are sort of, like, things people will try and do to, like, artificially grow a brand or like work on things in a certain way to meet a goal at the end of the day this is a platform for streaming content and meeting other people like streaming at its core is let's just focus on video games say you're streaming video games it's sharing that interest and meeting other people who share that interest if you're looking to grow your community and grow your streams that's going to happen naturally if you are genuine if you get involved in the community or the communities of the games you're streaming and you get to know people I think um, it's very easy for streamers, especially when they first get into this, to get swept away by the game of it all, by the numbers, by whatever system they're trying to work to help grow their stream. I think ultimately, at least in my experience, you will have the best results and meet the best people if you are just yourself and you get involved in the community. Go hang out with people, go get to know them. Like get to know the people that come into your chat, make an effort with them and Go and hang out with other people in your community. Like at the end of the day, you're here sharing a passion for something. Share it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about it. This podcast probably wouldn't have happened <clears throat> if we didn't all network with each other. Mm. Like I, I yeah. still remember two years ago, I stumbled across your stream, Condé, just randomly trying to network, and then we went out for beers. We're now friends, IRL, and the podcast is now born. Yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> that's genuine relationships and connections try and build that because that's better than any I, i'm I'm gonna use the the taboo words the the view button the fake branding like java brings up trying to get people like sub for sub and all that bullshit honestly it does not work it's not sustainable it might work short term it's not sustainable long term 100 percent. what what java says streaming has been around so long that like everyone can see through that like if, if you come in with a disingenuous attitude and you're going to try and use people no one's going to have time for that for a moment um and yeah to, to billy's point it may work for you short term but the, the the true like amazing thing about twitch and streaming platforms is just the interconnect interconnectivity it's a big word and i'm terrible at english <laughs> Um, Spell interconnectivity. I N T E R C O N N E C T. Ivity. Can you use it in but, a sentence? Um, nice. Yeah, that, that's basically it. It's the interconnectivity of um, people all across the world with those shared interests. Just throw yourself into it and uh, get to know people. And it's a big platform. You won't find people and potentially instantly gel with them immediately but oh it's it, it's life you make the effort and get to know people and you'll find some amazing people along the way i mean god i would have met these wonderful guys if it wasn't for just hanging out with them and having a shared yeah. interest in garbage <laughs> video games my elbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing i see in chat which wolfie just said follow for follow if you're trying to network 
don't go into a stream and say follow for follow. That's mm -hmm. the worst thing you can do when you're trying to network. Like it will not work. You would probably 90% of the time you will get banned for it. Probably. Mm -hmm. Like I know my chat, you will get banned for it. And like, because it's not the way to like, you know, network and grow or just go into a channel and be like, oh, if you follow me, I'll follow you. It's like, that's not, that's not how it works. It's, it's a massive placebo effect as well, because l let's yeah. say it works. They're never going to check you out. Or let's say 1% mm. checks you out. It's, it's completely wasted time. And Those it is genuine connections. Exactly. Mm. It is so painfully obvious to anybody who spends any time on this platform. If you're sitting there with 10,000 followers and you follow 10,000 people, but you have three viewers, you, you've tried to take a shortcut. You know, obviously there, there can be exceptions. I get that. But like, it's a shortcut. It will get you anywhere in the long run. Um, and again, it's, it's once you've, I feel like if you're a viewer on Twitch, if you're thinking about streaming, you're thinking, Hey, I'm, I'm interested to get into this. And I keep saying Twitch, but obviously I mean any platform where you can live stream. I feel like you should spend at least a couple of weeks as a viewer, get to know how it works, get to know what it is. Because like, you know, if you come into a channel and you think you're being clever and maybe like, I'm going to self promote here, but I'm not going to, cause you know, if you go in there and you say, Hey, I'm live, post your link a lot of streamers don't like that you know <laughs> and uh you know people That's the quickest way to get yeeted out of a chat exactly <laughs> right and and people will try and do it i don't know if you guys have experience but people maybe sometimes try and be a bit sneaky about it so they'll come into your chat they'll talk for five minutes and then they'll say all right i'm away to stream now see you later and it's like you're still self-promoting you just think you're being clever about it but everybody yeah. can see through this stuff you know and it's not the way to do it when my golden rule is when i'm in another streamer's chat it's all about them you know, I'm not talking about yeah. myself. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. If I'm in Java's chat, it's all about Java, what he's doing, you know, how he's been up, what he's been up to. That's the, the golden rule. It's about the streamer that you're there. Again, obviously, if you raid a streamer, you host a streamer, you come over there, maybe you can talk about yourself for a couple of minutes if that streamer's asking, but it's about them. That's the, the, the way to remember. And listen, I remember if, if a viewer comes into my channel, they're nice, they're friendly, they're talking away after a few days if i happen to notice that they're a streamer too or something comes up i'm much more inclined to want to check that person out and say hi and, and get to know them so it's yeah. being genuine about it goes a very very long way um yeah 100 percent. Yeah. i always like feel like saying i will i'm gonna go stream myself now is like going to a concert going on stage and be like oh yeah by the way i'm gonna sing now and it's like you're just a random person interrupting someone's show it's rude and it's like yeah you know absolutely all right uh what was the next sort of bullet point on that list manny the last bullet uh, then we have two more we have branding and we have communities okay we could talk about branding i think um kibbles have you got anything to kind of how you came up with any of your branding stuff i know you've got quite sort of specific branding oh yeah me too i'm sure yeah <laughs> let's go Kim. Let's... A big fish yeah, uh, maybe that's <laughs> what i was <laughs> talking about <laughs> <laughs> well, well a, a good one would be I, like I carried, how, how did you come up with fish. your name how, how did you come oh. up with your name <laughs> that, that would be a good so, one to start out with that is good actually yeah so um I well, never had any nicknames or anything growing up uh, that were uh, that I wanted to use. You mean thick fish? My name was is Max, so obviously I got like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> People would call me like Maxi Pad and stuff like that. I didn't really want to roll with that. That didn't work. But, <laughs> um, I was working at emotes. a dog food factory, so I'd come home. Yeah, I'd come home smelling like dog food, and my wife would be like, "Oh, you smell like kibbles," and she started calling me kibbles for a little bit, and that was like a week or two before I started streaming. Like, oh, this works. <laughs> And Kibbles was taken, so I went with the Mighty. <laughs> nice. Good memes. I like that. Yeah. yeah. What about hey, you, yeah, Condi? Was... How, how did you come up with your name? Uh, mine oh, is really is... boring. Um, <laughs> uh, so for me, like, my last name is Condi. And it was many years ago. Like I think before PlayStation Network was even really a thing. Uh, I was trying to play some multiplayer game, like Medal of Honor or something, and I had to create a username. So I tried Andrew, and they were like, yeah, it's taken. So then I tried Condi, and they were like, it's taken. And then they said, here's a suggestion of one that's not taken. And the top one was Condi Fly. So I was like, yeah, we'll click that. And I just stuck with it forever. 
um mm -hmm. and up until very recently that's worked very well for me because condi fly is never taken anywhere so i had it on twitch on twitter instagram like I, every, the same name everywhere then things happened and now my twitter has an extra y and it i honestly <laughs> it keeps me up at night but like yeah kind of a boring way to get my name but um i don't know what about the rest of you guys well for me it's boring as well <laughs> i basically had like before i started streaming i wanted to change my name on twitch and i didn't know what to name myself and like i, I was in a party with a party chat with a friend of mine and he, we were like i was looking for names he was like give me a, i was like give me a suggestion he was like go with that guy called and i was like all right that was just what i went with all right <laughs> <Boring. Yeah. laughs> you, Java? All right, this is a this is a fantastic story. Like honestly, this one should be written down for the ages because the effort <laughs> and thought that went into me coming up with this Twitch name is just get ready to clip, guys. Get ready to clip. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hope you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me get my leather bound book out for this one. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what the fuck? Um, I really liked coffee, and I got called a boosted monkey once while playing Halo. So I thought, hey, coffee monkey is a great name, but it was taken. So I used a uh, I used a Google <laughs> thesaurus to find another term for coffee, and I got Java. And I went from there. All right, guys. Wow. Thanks for the story. It was great. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. It. So, and Cyber, what about yourself? I know you kind of went I through mean, name change and things. Oh, oh it was yeah, ridiculous. yeah, yeah, ridiculous. So I used to be called Saccharin. So the way that I, I literally figured that out was I looked at one of these, literally, and, like, I don't know how much, like, artificial sweeteners actually goes into those things. I don't really want to know. Um... <laughs> But it said saccharin, and literally in uh, Night Nine Problems, the GC song, it literally said saccharin at the same time as I read this. So I was like, it's fate, it's fate. So I started using it, and every chat that I went into, everybody was like, what the fuck does saccharin mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to change it. So literally, I went through maybe a week trying to find so many different names and like putting it in all these random name generators, and Cyberwolf came up. But it was taken and i was like i thought way too long and hard i like cyber wolf so i thought screw it i'm putting a zero in my name <laughs> 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 gotta do it even even that is taken like so many different places so it has to be like it's cyber wolf on on a lot of my social media but oh my god <laughs> or that cyber wolf oh yep yeah. uh, i mean uh, I've, I've tried that but even that's taken so was the struggle. I, I will say this much about my name. It's very, very unlikely I'll find someone has taken it on another platform. Mm. Um, the only reason I don't have just like regular Java Monkey on Twitch is because uh, being the fool that I am, I decided to change my username to be a meme in someone's channel about two years ago. <laughs> and um, apparently that username still won't be given back to me by Twitch. I, oh. Unlucky. Everybody tweet Twitch. About Let's my get this sorted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about my name, but a lot of people like get it wrong. It's like some people just say that card guy. Like all the time, I get that legit. Every second stream I go in, I get oh that card guy. What's up? I'm like, like what is so difficult about that name? <laughs> or like Max, he tweets at that guy. You know? Hey, yeah. most, most of us can't read anyway, so yeah. we yeah. play video games, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do yeah, I mean, I'm guilty of that. I can really work with though. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so oh, yeah, then that book earlier, hundred percent a picture book. Hundred like, <laughs> percent. Just to then, I guess, go into that a bit further in terms of like branding, because obviously, like, I think somebody, like it may have been you, Billy, mentioned earlier, like you are your brand. Yeah. Uh, but like branding's like an important thing, I think, for a lot of people. Um, and I don't know. I want to just get your guys' thoughts. Like for me personally, I feel like your brand isn't something you decide before you start it's something that builds up based on just who you are what your community is like um so like for example my brand is i would say scottish guy with a beard everyone roasts him all the time and like that's like I, 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 it's just i am the butt of the joke what do you mean and we people are only you. there for the beard we right we would you. never yeah. make fun of you ever <laughs> with Oh, I'm yeah. a throw shit. I need water. We always take the high ground because we're all of them. Yeah, yeah. See, like, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. But, like, again, that's not something I decided when I started streaming. <laughs> like, it just. I'll tell you what you did decide up. to hate mint chocolate ice cream, okay? That's not yeah. a choice. Yeah. It's like a monster. <laughs> all right. Um, make better decisions. Why 
weren't we the mint chocolate haters podcast you're right we should have been <laughs> i should have just taken over and changed the name <laughs> but yeah what do you guys think with like branding like i mean obviously it comes down to a lot of i think you, you can associate like your artwork uh your i guess alerts like all the stuff in your stream emotes it can all be linked into the branding um like again for example like i have the mint chocolate emote right because it's part of the whole meme in the chat like so yeah i mean what what's what's your guys thoughts on like again kibbles i know you've got kind of specific things with like your emotes and artwork and stuff like that and it all ties into your brand how did you kind of come up with it um i just kind of started wearing a headband <laughs> <laughs> no it's just so it. <laughs> <laughs> see that's what i'm talking about though you know see, it can start it can start really simple you just yeah. you just gotta just gotta roll with it see if it works and if it doesn't just ditch it and figure out something else find something that sticks that you like except for yeah. condi's case because he's gonna have to stick with getting made fun of yeah i'm not getting out of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's not a life choice really no but <laughs> for me it is like basically like i said i started streaming when i started watching condi so then when we finally like played together i or he quickly realized i'm not a very quiet soul you know what i mean <laughs> So like when I play games and I'm very passionate about those games. Passionate. That's passion. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's passion. I tend to like make a little bit more noise and like get a bit angry, like just a small tad when people kill me. Uh, so yeah, I raged a lot basically. <laughs> and there's still that one video I always remember from Condi's channel was just like the rage part of it. And basically what I did when I started, like, really getting into streaming, I started off with, like, titling my streams, oh, Angry German Man, you know? Because, like, basically, the thing is, I rage, I'm angry, I'm German, you know, that that fits. That's kind of a branding. So then, for my emotes, my alerts and stuff, I'm a weep, so I like anime. So I just took, like... Ooh. <laughs> I just took, like, stuff from anime I like, like, gifts for, like, alerts and, like emotes i i uh put on like a theme from a uh, anime character i like so it's just basically what i did yeah. who watches anime it's literally in the background <laughs> right now <laughs> what <laughs> anyone else got any thoughts on branding or do you want to move on to another point i, think... I would say just, oh, on you go billy no no you go ahead i, I would just say let, let it happen don't don't worry about your brand um like obviously the more effort that you put into it the more it's just going to seem forced L like everybody here it all happened it, like it, whether it be a clip a meme or just something that randomly happened like during one of the streams like just have fun just chill mm -hmm. and uh, it'll eventually come to you i have no idea what you mean i built my entire brand based around a fake voice i really sound like this and i talk like this a lot <laughs> but i just talked like this with a voice changer no, i 100 percent billy took the words right out of my mouth it is just be be genuine like be yourself and stream yeah. and your brand will come with time like yeah, as you build your community and as you stream and as you get into it people will like, like that will just your brand will grow from there and it will mean more and have more relevance because it's grounded in something rather than trying to pick a brand and shoe hole like make yourself into that brand you're gonna find yourself limited it, you're gonna find yourself not as heavily invested in it it's gonna come across as hollow just yeah be yourself and let it grow naturally over time that's yeah. what she said <laughs> <I'm leaving>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys that's been the podcast <laughs> Bad. <laughs> all right cool um was there any other points manu that we'd kind of wrote down to talk about yeah we had we had communities okay that's what we also had cool and so i guess in my head i'd thought of that in two ways which was one like the idea of building a community around your own stream or your own you know content and the other one was i guess pre-existing communities and people's experience with you know again because live stream platforms like twitch make sure they're very community based that is the whole point is community that's why people come back every day and there are set communities that people create and build streamer communities things like that so i guess it was experience a little bit on that 
um i can talk a little bit about the the second point there which is the the the, the communities that are already created around um yeah what i'll say is there are good ones and there are not good ones uh, and that's kind of it, it there's there exists a lot of communities out there where it might just be the case of the the, the top streamer whoever started the community it's all about them and they have this community based on hey we're going to help streamers you know we'll get you more views blah 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 but it's really just like bait almost a pyramid scheme to help whoever's at the top um, i prefer the term multi-level marketing scheme <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Stone. yes so like there, there are ones like that and i think definitely avoid there's a lot of very very good communities as well um i'm part of one which has been fantastic for me like and i think when you're starting off finding a good community is is great uh, the, the community i'm part of uh is you know and i think a couple other people in here are in the same community i don't want to name drop or anything but like there's uh there's so many people in that community that it is very easy for me to find other content creators that are interested in the same sort of things as me and are you know have a share the same sort of i don't know what views and 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 goals as, as myself um and I, I personally have made an, an awful lot of friends through that and it's so easy because you join the community and people naturally want to meet each other and, and kind of get involved and you know it doesn't have to be huge i've maybe made five to ten very good friends from this community and it just kind of every so often somebody new will come into the community and, and we'll get involved that's um, where i found you exactly right it's the same yeah. sort of thing there's a lot of people i've met through that and it's it's i would say an awful lot easier than trying to do it yourself you, you don't want to do it everything yourself there's obviously something to be said about that but i feel like to me one of the greatest joys of doing this whole thing is the people i've made friends with and not just the viewers because the viewers are amazing and they're my best friends and you know all that but the other streamers that were able to say like let's like do a multi-stream let's play the same game let's just have that interaction and that engagement and then again for the people i've been able to meet in real life it's it's crazy to me um <clears throat> so i definitely think there are a lot of good communities out there they can help you but you have to be very very wary because again some of them are very follow for follow oriented some of them are very i mean god do you you guys know about that i can't remember what it was called but there was we, one we, where they we had, all know which one you mean yeah yeah that's yeah, fine we all yeah. we all know which one you mean. yeah so and it was all about like some weird point system where the more people you were lurking the more points you got and it, it just it, it, none of that matters right i yeah. like to lurk a few people if i'm streaming or i'm sitting playing games i'll maybe have two or three streams up of my friends that i want to support but i can't be active talking in the chat all the time you know and i have that open that's absolutely fine there's communities that are just purely devoted to that which i don't necessarily think is a good thing either but yeah uh, i definitely think a good community can really really help you when you're starting out um yeah i don't know what you guys think same sort of uh on that sort of topic yeah, I mean, like you said, there's good communities and there's bad I agree on that point. And, like, coming back to the point of networking, a community can always be, like, a really good way to network with people. Because, obviously, you, you, you find people that are just, like, in the community to get more viewers, for example. You realize that, but there's also some people you will realize that are, like, you know, the same kind of humor or whatever than you and you can like network with those people and get to know them get friends with them play with them stuff like that so community can always be like really good on your path to like growing a bit as well and because generally if you show someone a lot of support they will just show it back but like i said don't do the follow for follow thing that doesn't work so <laughs> But, like, yeah, if you just support someone for a while, they will show it back as well. So that's why I think that, like, community where there's, like, a lot of people in can be really good to network as well. You know, get to know people, play with them, stuff like that. So, yeah. But it's yeah, also, like, the communities, like you said, that are just only there to support one person. And, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think ultimately it comes down to the point we sort of hit back on quite a few times, which it just comes down to, like, the genuine reason for the platform and for twitch is that if it's a community like there's a lot of people who are streaming on twitch most of the people you will see 
in chat. They're probably streaming themselves. They're probably trying to get involved in it. Ultimately, it comes down to making friends with people and getting to know more people. Like, yeah, it, it boils down to that. All of the all of the extras, all of the games, all of the oh, you have to do this for this community. This if they're requiring something of you, that's usually a big red flag. The communities yeah. that are put together are people who are just like-minded and wanting to meet more people and make friends and support their friends. That is that is definitely a great thing to do because you can't stream on an island. You can't be doing this on your own. It yeah. is a social platform and you've got to get to know other people and socialize with other people. But if you start seeing communities are like, oh, we expect this from you. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Be very wary of those. Um, a lot of them will try and, especially if you're a newer streamer, it can seem tempting. They can seem to offer you something in return for something. Ultimately, like true communities and I mean this applies to life in general, like true friendships is non-transactional. The people are there to support you because they like you and you're there to support them because you like them. It's it's that simple really. And um I can I can say I'm very fortunate myself to be a part of some wonderful communities where I met these guys as well, where there there is that lack of transactional nature. You just meet people and it's just all right, I get to like these guys. I get on with these guys, these are my, my friends, and we support each other because I want to see them succeed because and they want to see me succeed. And that's not a requirement for a friendship, that is just a part of it. So I think that is the most important thing to look out for is just treat it like a treat it like making friends and meeting new people. Yes, we should yeah. get a streamer island. Um, I'm down. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm down to get a streamer island. It's about a hundred thousand dollars minimum for a Caribbean island. Uh, if we split that between enough people, oh, um, yeah. easy. You might want to aim a bit above that because I think the low tier ones a have a lot of half. snakes. But <laughs> you're okay with snakes? Just go for it. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. I'm down. <clears throat> we can train the snakes. Oh. To be a source of income, and something. we can make them attack Andrew. Fuck. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, what about the other side of it then, which is like kind of building your own community around your your content and your your stream or your videos or whatever it is you're doing. Any tips? Any advice? Because obviously that can be. I remember it can be a very difficult thing for a new streamer. You know, especially if you're sitting there with one viewer, you know, for a long, long time how can you start to build that community um which you know i feel like eventually you're going to build a community of some kind but like what do you do how's your your kind of your best tips and tricks for for doing that cyber i don't know well, if i would throw it to you or yeah so for me it's being as genuine as you can and when somebody comes in actually welcoming them and, and and not being like Oh hey, thanks for the follow, and then just going straight back to something. Try try and seem engaging because nobody wants to see a streamer that's only focusing one hundred percent on the game unless you're like one of the elite class. Like the, there's always an exception to the rule. Like you can find people that don't even have a webcam or a mic, and they they are literally playing a game and they've got let's say a thousand viewers, right? That's the exception. Don't be the exception because there's like. It's never gonna happen, right? Unless you win the lottery or whatever. <laughs> Make sure that you are genuine, one hundred percent, and welcome people in. And and that to me is how you build a community. You get people coming back where like you haven't seen them for six months, but they'll stop by and they'll say, Hey, by the way, can you remember we talked about this? And it's, it's moments like that that I stream for because you get like like as soon as Wolfie comes into the chat, like you, you can speak to her and you can say like how was your day and then reference something that was two weeks ago and there's the there's the content like it, it speaks for itself be genuine and that's how you build a community yeah i agree with that kibbles what do you think you got anything on on that one yeah he <laughs> he kind of said it all um just being genuine you make sure that you're actually trying to connect with people if um someone follows try and say hi they won't always say hi sometimes they just follow and they lurk they don't want to say anything and that's okay too you don't want to try and pressure people into speaking because sometimes they want to just lurk there so know sure. when to engage know when to keep pursuing that engagement never call out okay. lurkers yep. yeah. 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 Yeah, don't, do, <laughs> don't go to your stream like list and be like oh you lurking hey what's up man it's like 
saw She's somebody awkward. post about that on Twitter. They're yeah, like, awkward. I can see these people lurking on here, but they never say anything. I'm thinking about calling them out. Uh, oh, 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that. Just, just <laughs> let them chill. Let, let them chill. They might just be enjoying having your stream in the background. Yeah. yeah. Dinner That's or something, one thing. But... Someone calls me out while I'm lurking. Like, that makes me not want to speak mm -hmm. anymore. Like, I'm just going to go in. It's, it's not my, you know, style. But one thing I was also going to add is talking about YouTube right we just like had aspects of streaming you know being engaged engaging and stuff we talk like youtube content creation you can't just be like engaging to people that are subscribing like directly through a video i mean you could make a video saying thank you to like the people that subscribe but the thing is like a big or good production value on a video like how the editing is made how it looks like the audio and what you add to a video, like memes or something, you know, can always like get people to subscribe as well. And, you know, you can be engaging through like intros or outros of a video, for example, as well, if you want to thank people. So if you want to get into like YouTube creation, I just think like how the video is made, how it looks from like a production value kind of thing. And like small cuts, like for example, like small cuts can make like a real big difference where it's like a transition or it's just like a cut. You know what I mean? It can look so much cleaner for a video when it's just like a transition instead of like an instant cut. Yeah. And that makes like people enjoy the video more. And yeah. We're 2010 YouTube boys, hard cuts every 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to like genuinely segue, this is a nice connector between Twitch streaming and YouTube content is a, again, consistency yeah. you're looking to build a community you've got to be producing content for that community to be based around ultimately and with streaming stream regularly be on a consistent schedule uh, your community will grow with people who are able to come hang out in your streams when you stream at those times um, there'll probably be people you meet through streaming that won't be able to hang out in your stream due to time zones like that's the beauty of it being an international thing but they may still show up now and again when they can having that consistency and then with youtube consistently uploading like making sure you're consistently putting out videos for people to keep coming back to watch and as manu says even though you can't be directly interacting with them through the video you do have the comment section if people are commenting on your videos take the time to respond to them they ask questions in the comments make sure you answer those questions start building like being active there we all know that internet comments can be a cesspit <laughs> like there are parts of the internet where like the comments are just terrible but especially, like, even I'm, I'm not a large YouTuber, so I can't speak to this from first-hand experience, but I see this in a lot of large YouTubers. Still take the time to go through the comments, even when the video is first out. Um, even, like, go look at the ones that get rated highly and respond to them, because usually there is... The community itself, if it's there, will filter out on YouTube comments the good ones from just the random Russian bot account commenting. <laughs> Um, and like True. go in and engage with them that way but just again the core thing between any platform twitch mixer youtube facebook gaming is consistency have a place for your community to come together start a community and start a place that is just going to be like they, they can come home from work they can be at work they can come home from school whatever it is and they can just go hey i know i can come online at this time and i'm gonna have a group of people here who i can hang out with and just have a good time and that's the most important thing is that stable place for people to just come and chill for sure absolutely um <clears throat> yeah i mean i think Your that's kind is of... trying to make me speak like korg and i regret <laughs> this <immediately. laughs> um yeah i mean i think did you say there's one final point we could cover there manny um what do you mean with like um, uh, what, what just on our, our topic list with i, I think we oh, kind of yeah. covered communities now we have we we have branding we have community we have networking we have stop worrying about growth okay yeah so that's an important one so i think like the key thing to as well say is like we're not necessarily going to go in like too deep on any of these topics right now um i just my idea for the show is that we would have a bunch of bullet points and just maybe bounce off of that see where we go um but hey, obviously if people ask questions we can maybe go in a bit deeper into any of these topics but um so that when you said stop worrying about growth i mean anyone want to yeah. jump in and kind of talk on that yeah. a little bit how important that is cause... i got yeah i got a good example for that and i can 
like speak out of experience for myself as well because it was like the time destiny 2 came out and i can also speak probably for you andrew we used to do like trials carries mm -hmm. on like the weekends to because like we knew people would come in like a lot of people would come in and follow and like do whatever it's just like there was a lot of people interested in getting carried in, in like destiny for example and it used to like give you a lot of follows back then i remember when i was there's was like a few days where i made 20 30 followers a day just from like having trials carries in my title and doing carries and it's nice for the moment you get to these followers you know you, you grow but these people are most likely not going to come back into your stream because they're there to get carried as soon as like the carry is done they're going to be like oh yeah i got carried and the most you will ever see them is when you do carries again and they are interested in carries for example i don't know how often one can say a carry but i'm i'm gonna do it so another example for that is fortnite when fortnite came out everyone used to be like playing with followers and mm. that used to give like a lot of viewers and a shit ton of follows as well and but like it's these people that they come to see that game they come to play with you that game and they're not they probably most of them are not gonna stay because they're just there if you play something else they're not gonna like go into your stream and watch it because they just expect to see fortnite and like they expect you to play fortnite with them and that's one thing that is big for growth as well that's like it is nice to get all these followers a day from like having people in your chat that want to play with you but most of them are probably not going to stay so like the, you can have bigger numbers but the viewers are not going to go up if you play anything else so you're basically stuck to like play that game if you just only want to keep growing which is like for someone that streams variety like me it's not that fun hmm. so that's what i wanted to touch on first and then i also have like the viewer number which everyone says all the time is don't look at your viewer number because that will just like if it's lower than other days it's gonna make you feel like you're guilty or something or you feel like oh did i do something wrong no one's watching that's why i well, I'd probably talk for everyone here, but I have my sub, uh, my view count, like blend out. I can't see it. Yeah, and that gives me confidence boost. I just talk to the people that are in chat and try to enjoy the stream with the people that are in chat. And yeah, that's how I don't focus on like how many viewers I have. Who, the people that are there are always there. I know who's there, who I can talk to. The falls will come after a while, you know, if people enjoy your stream. So yeah. I think we've I, all kind of like answered this individually, but one of the biggest things that I feel, if somebody says, don't worry about growth, I hate that person, right? Because we're all in this to grow. But one of the things that you can only control what you can control, you can't control growth, but what you can control is making your content good. To touch on what Java said, you can make people able to access your content on different platforms, like building a YouTube community, you've got discord you've got so many different platforms to grow outside of twitch and mixer and, and you stream in general but somebody who says don't worry about growth i i personally don't believe in that because we're all in this to well i speak for myself okay i'm not going to speak for you guys i'm in here to be successful in my own terms i don't want to be the biggest streamer on the platform but i want to say that's my channel and i'm proud of it so for me to grow that that's that's my ideology anyway mm. but if you can grow your content if you've got zero viewers make the content good post it on other platforms for other people whether it be small clips on on like twitter i i cannot like count on one hand the amount of times per day if i post a clip somebody will follow me like on a totally different platform it's insane if you make your content spreadable over everything you can grow that way um yeah it's not pigeonhole and like everybody's like i need to be big on on twitch it's like okay but you also need to do x y and z out with that mm -hmm. y you touched on this earlier condi somebody um that thinks you're gonna be big on twitch overnight is wrong you've got let let's say you stream for six hours you're still worrying about your stream as soon as you go offline and you, you're making like your Twitch goods, like you're making everything look 
fine on on the panels you then making sure that OBS is fine you're like rewatching your content saying can i do this better Th there's so much growth that goes out with the the actual channel itself it's insane how much like time and effort you actually put in uh like different overlays um that's it's, it's a, i change my overlay like every week it's yeah. insane <laughs> don't listen to me when it comes to branding because i change it all the time <laughs> i'm like oh i could tweak this and then uh it's, it's ridiculous but worry about growth in, in my opinion but control what you can like you can't force somebody yeah. to watch you but what you can do is make yourself entertaining and then like how, ma how many people still watch your clips condé from months ago and somebody will come in and then say oh like i'm here because of youtube or i'm here because of tiktok it's i i got like randomly like in a conversation with andrew um sorry condé uh <laughs> last week when we were all like hanging out and like we just well i randomly made a tiktok account and uh people started following me on mixer because yeah. of that it's it's insane it's ridiculous how you can grow out with your actual stream yeah it's about you being really know what's inspired. gonna hit on what platform oh sorry no no go you go ahead because <laughs> I'll, I'll post uh clips i used to post clips exclusively on twitter and see what would happen on there then i started figuring out you could put a little uh bit at the beginning to make it look like a thumbnail so i started putting it on there and then i just started putting them on tiktok like a month ago and it helped so much i've gotten people that come in saying they're coming from tiktok and it's like it's, I, this didn't seem like it would be something that would work <laughs> yeah absolutely there's the yeah i think to that point if you can make that content accessible to people put it where people will find it and then you know as long as the content's good um what i would say like what billy was saying was that obviously yes we all want growth um i think that there are people that probably stream for just for fun i mean when i started out my only intention was to stream to record my gameplay so that i could watch it back and um and, and hopefully improve my uh my, my my gameplay but that led to a point now where it's like yeah everyone feels good when they're getting some kind of growth on their channel everyone likes that um the thing i find though is again the only number that should really matter is you know how many people are talking in chat and if you can get people talking in chat and you can start building up your community that way that is the important thing uh, as far as i'm concerned uh, when it comes to it i feel like i had another point but it's completely <laughs> gone due to the i feel like i've lost it all right uh, do we have any do we have any questions billy <laughs> um can i just oh sure add yeah to that point just before we all finish up on that i think um i think billy put it brilliantly where you can only control what you can control i'm sorry i am sad at 45 degree angle i'm really <laughs> struggling here i'm essentially just doing squats to stay in camera frame um but yeah like um when it comes to growth it's just been saying this whole time don't focus on the numbers so much like a hundred followers that never engage in your community is a hollow number um worry about being engaging with the community getting to know people um and building genuine relationships with people like we will all worry about the numbers like we'll all worry about people we like have engaged with and get to know not coming back you've always got to be mindful like, everyone has their life everyone will drop by when they can but we've all got things to do and people will miss the streams now and again um but yeah be focused on building that genuine growth where people will come back people will come hanging out with you and you'll be able to build those genuine relationships with people through your community um don't overstress the numbers too much and when it comes to like I, I think we've all said i don't think i when i stream i don't look at my viewer number while i'm streaming i will definitely go back later on and re-watch the stream and say okay what was i doing that worked what was i doing that didn't work um how can i adjust what i'm doing based on um based on like where there were viewers and where there weren't maybe you'll just see a lull or a peak just because people have become available and they're free to come watch at that time but when you're streaming live you can psych yourself very out very easily by staring at the numbers when you're streaming focus on what you're doing focus on being engaged with the people you have there like ultimately it's nuts that you can sit there and stream and there is someone at least it's one person just sitting there talking to you sharing with that at the minimum like focus on that and make that your goal while you're streaming and um 
try not to worry about growth in numbers while you are alive. Just enjoy what you're doing and engage with the people you have there because, yeah. Clap. Don't take it for granted. Yeah, I, I remember I, I definitely don't like it. It blows my mind. <laughs> if you try to worry too much on the numbers, you could end up like me. I used to keep my phone right in front of uh, my computer, like right in front of the keyboard, and I'd have the viewer account right there, and it uh, was open so much it burned an image permanently into my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see like the little magnifying glass and dashboard. <laughs> All right, yeah. I fixed my chair. We're back. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. I remembered what I was going to say as well. My my no, I didn't. Point that I brought up was um. So I feel like maybe it's just me, but I I feel like everybody has a a kind of range of viewers that they're comfortable with. So like I've been streaming for long enough now that I'm very comfortable turning on my stream, talking rubbish, and playing games, and I'm comfortable. Oh, with my community and the sort of normal sort of numbers that i would tend to see in a, a stream I, I don't like to look at my viewer account live either but every so often during a stream i'll maybe just check on it just because I, yeah. I for me i like that feedback you know sometimes i get a game particularly if it's a game i've not streamed before or it's maybe a new game that's come out and i want to see how it's doing um recently for me one that really popped off was no man's sky and it like it was right before the new release came out and every so often I would click and see, well, actually, this is higher viewership than I'm, I'm used to. But the problem I have is that when that viewership goes too high, I feel very uncomfortable all of a sudden. <laughs> and I don't know if any of you have experienced it, if you've had a big raid, a big host, I then suddenly feel out of my comfort zone. And, you know, but I, I remember when I started streaming, if I got a host for 10 viewers, I felt out of my comfort zone. And I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I have more viewers. I, I'm, I'm suddenly messing up my words. I'm kind of panicking a little bit. And I'm not putting on the best show. But now, over time, I would feel like I've grown as a streamer to reach a point where, okay, I'm comfortable with 20 to 30, 40 viewers, maybe. Anything more than that, if it goes into three figures, if a, there's a host or a raid comes out, I, I'm not comfortable. I'm out of my comfort zone. So I feel like there is no shortcut to suddenly get, bam, 200 viewers. You've got a friend that's a big streamer that's going to host and raid you. You're not, maybe you are, but if it was me, I wouldn't be putting on my best show at that point. I would be too nervous and too uh, uncomfortable to actually put out the content that I want to put out, right? You need to grow into it as, as time goes on, I think. Yeah. I remember when that happened a while back when we were playing uh, Sea of Thieves. Exactly, right? That's <laughs> oh, what I was yeah. literally thinking yeah. of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You were you were like okay guys about twenty more minutes and I'm gonna get off and then there was silence, just dead silence for about five minutes. Okay guys, I'm I'm gonna stay on a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. I think it was like a twelve hundred person raid. Yeah. Like and like for me like I was it's it, that's mind blowing right <laughs> to see over a thousand people there like it's it's scary but it 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 ruined me like because I was trying to stream with Kibbles we were trying to have a good time. I couldn't focus on anything. I was trying desperately to be like, oh God, are there mods? L l you know, all these people saying potentially, I mean, they were lovely, right? It was a very friendly, wholesome raid, but like, you don't know when there's that many people there, what's going on. And to try and then speak to the people I'm playing with and put on content, I'm not experienced at it. And I, f I feel like I fell flat on my face. I probably could have handled that situation much better if I was much more comfortable. But that's kind of my point, I guess, is that, you know, you need to grow into it. It goes along with everything we said, like your branding, you need to grow into it. Your setup, your gear and equipment that you're using, you have to just gradually grow into it. Everything takes time. It does take a long time sometimes, but everyone goes at their own pace and, and grows into it. Um, yeah, I remember that Limmy raid where everyone wanted you to play truck simulator. Oh, dude, yeah. That was, that was fun. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, do you have any other points on that or do you have any questions? What do you want yeah, to do? Yeah, last, last point we have was consuming content and learning from Okay, cool. So I guess I can start briefly on that just to explain what I meant by that, which is that one of the things I was trying to do when I was looking at improving my stream or my quality or trying to come up with new ideas was I, I personally just watch a ton of Twitch, YouTube, listen to tons of podcasts. Like that's what I do. So a lot of ideas that I maybe come up with, with for content have been inspired by something else I've seen. And I think, that, I think that there's a right way to do that as well. Obviously don't straight up copy something from someone that you've seen, but if there's a streamer you particularly enjoy, you really like their content, why do you like their content? What can you do that would maybe have a similar effect? You know, 
I like the idea of copy and improve, right? Take an idea from someone else's stream that you think is working, <laughs> improve it, make your own spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this was planned. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I don't know if you guys have any experience on that with like any inspiration you've taken from other streams or from YouTube videos or anything like that. <laughs> For anyone who's... Uh, Listening in audio. Personally attacked you. <laughs> <laughs> we're all now we're all now wearing very similar hats. Yeah. Oh yeah, we all wear hats, obviously. Why? Well, I, I just assumed you were, Manny. <laughs> no, I don't really wear hats, but um, but yeah, anyone got any thoughts on on kind of taking content from other streamers or other content creators to get ideas, kind of growth from that? I think uh, personally, like, you are never going to find that unique streamer. I think everybody picks and chooses what they want from other streamers. I know what I have, um, but it's more making that content your own. Um, like, we have, we are, oh my god. So any, anybody that's listening, Jabber is now a fucking reindeer. Um, <laughs> Are we all gonna meme right now? Because I can meme harder than everybody. I've got a onesie over there. <laughs> Are you okay, sure? I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a full Spider-Man outfit in my cupboard. So and you I'm... got the. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Thanos that half the podcast out of existence. Yeah. <laughs> my God, that's good. I just want to know what you do with that in your spare time. It just sits by my desk, so I can intimidate viewers with it. <laughs> <laughs> he snaps away all the trolls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my dear God! All right, um, yeah, let's move on. I want to talk like just a, literally a couple more things. Borderlands Three. I know at least three of you have been playing it a lot. Tell oh. me about it. I want to hear what your thoughts are, how you're enjoying it. Just, just give me a, yeah. give me a rundown. It's a sexy game. Yeah, yeah no spoilers. Yep. By the way, no, no spoilers. yeah, no spoilers, no story spoilers. Um, Sorry, no spoilers. I should have said. Is, no spoilers. Uh, the first day I played until the sun came up the next morning, and I think oh. that about sums up how perfect that game is. Mm. Well, um, I was it has been waiting a long time since I've played a game where I've just been having so much fun. Time just flies past, mm -hmm. and I don't even realize how much I'm enjoying it. It is the Borderlands formula, polished and well refined as I have seen it, and I can't get enough of it. Yeah, I agree. So, like, literally, <laughs> literally everything that was like. You know, Borderlands 2 was like a really good game as well. Almost perfect. But everything that was like not as good in Borderlands 2 is perfect in Borderlands 3. So like, it, like before I, just, I knew Borderlands 3 was coming out, you know, I was excited for Kingdom Hearts 3 because I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan. I was like, oh, Kingdom Hearts, it's fucking amazing. Like, that's going to be my game of the year, but I can already say like, fucking borderlands 3 is gonna be my game of the year i got like 30 hours played now on my character <laughs> i finished it yesterday like it's amazing and like the thing about borderlands is you can finish the story but there's so much more to do when you're done like there's the legendaries you can farm you can farm for you can farm, like a build you know like you can build your character however you want you can go like in the stealth character like damage dps like all that good stuff and it's like the gun play feels <laughs> so good as well <laughs> the gun gun play feels so good and polished as well and then like the new movement with the sliding and like the, 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 the like the grappling and all that stuff is just amazing i love it <laughs> the fuck are you doing don't, don't worry even think it. he knows what he's doing. I'm yeah. getting <laughs> I'm getting beard shamed right now. That's what's happening. Mm. Oh. You've, got, you've got some nice looking stubble there. Yeah, thank you, man. I didn't shave this morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, well, I'm glad to hear you guys are enjoying it. Again, obviously, it's not I think my type of game, just because I've I've never played any Borderlands games. I am sure I would love them if I sat down and played them. I just have never yeah, got into it. it, but um, maybe yeah, one day. Do it. I had a friend that that's like the same. Do yeah, it. also you also had like the same argument. PvP player, you like playing PvP, and there's no PvP in Borderlands. Yeah. But then he played it, 
and he actually can't get off it right now. Like he's just the only thing he's playing constantly, and like uh, you know, that's how quick it can go. I mean, technically there is PvP, but it's just technically, horribly yeah. imbalanced. <laughs> yeah, you should just do a, a, a duel. Someone that has a mole was ten levels under you, and it's still kind of wreck you because of that fucking iron bear. <laughs> yeah, you just drop the nuke. It's like, hey, let's PvP instantly nuke them, and the fight's over. It's like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, luck text. <laughs> <laughs> um all right cool well let's finish off with a few viewer questions uh do we have some i think we've got a few billy but if you want to will, will the next I, I mean, podcast yeah. be purely asmr yes that's yes. the plan episode zero <laughs> was the beta episode Absolutely one is perfect yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah if anybody has questions feel free to like post in the questions yes right? please 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 use that question section yeah guys so if you're not already aware uh, there's a command there you can click on stream chat and there is a room for questions i think you have to click somewhere to join the room um but everyone should be able to go in there any questions you have for any of the hosts anything like that please feel free to put them in there uh, we'll run through a few of them just now um and uh hopefully we'll get to everyone um <clears throat> so yeah billy you want to you want to pick a question or two yep so your lovely wife has done uh, how do you balance streaming regularly with seeing non-stream people you love e.g. family, friends, and significant others. I mean, I think I can answer this one. Um, so, ultimately, I moved in with uh, my fiancé, and obviously streaming is... It's not difficult while she's here, but you obviously want to spend time with IRL friends and all that kind of stuff. Um, finding uh, a schedule that works for you that isn't going to compromise everything else is one of the most intricate things i think that you can do to your stream everybody has been in a stream where somebody is burned out and does not want to stream but they they are streaming because they feel like if they don't stream they're not going to grow all this kind of stuff um it goes back to the whole brand thing you want to watch a streamer that seems like they're energetic and they want to they want to stream finding uh, a schedule that works for you is number one in my opinion agreed yeah it's uh it's it's all about balance isn't it it's it's about finding those times where you can i, I feel like obviously for me and my wife we we kind of agreed on set times although i've been really bad at following that but for the most part i feel like as long as you're it's very easy to get like just swept into to streaming and content creation it's very easy because you get that little you know there's a that, that bit of excitement when you get some new followers you get some new viewers and it's so easy to just do that and nothing else um when obviously you know you've got other responsibilities in life and and as long as you can come up with that balance i'm not in trouble okay like listen i have a good balance i think <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's it's like billy said it's finding the schedule that works for you making sure that you are giving time because as much as we all love what we do um you know family and friends irl connections are so important uh you do not want to let those go uh, by any means so it's definitely worth uh worth balancing it out yep 100 percent um we have another one from legend do java and kibbles have their desk cams so high because they have messy desks no they just don't have legs come on we all know we all know uh, this I, I i actually have an answer for this question all right the secret <laughs> is out so uh, i do have a tidy desk the reason my camera is so high is I like to pretend that I can play mouse and keyboard, but secretly I'm playing on the controller the whole time. <laughs> and I don't want people to know that. Therefore, I put the camera this high so it looks like I'm playing mouse and keyboard and I'm really good at the games I'm playing, but nah, controller the whole way. Okay, important question. Do you play Borderlands on a controller? No. Oh. Why not? Because mouse and keyboard is superior. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, thing is like, the thing is like to me, yeah. I sometimes play it on controller because I just like... You know, I started playing Borderlands flipped. on controller. So I just have like the feel more for controller to play Borderlands. But I do play it on Monster Keyboard as well. So I do play controller yeah. in a lot of like Monster Hunter World is a great example of a game I play controller on because I for like third person RPG kind of games, third person action games, it feels better for me. I don't know why. I think I just prefer the yeah, controls. Yeah, that's the same thing for me. But for, for shooters, I've gotten so used to, especially just from playing Destiny and Counter Strike a lot on PC. I've gotten used to playing shooters yeah. with mouse and keyboard. And even though Borderlands was a game that I played on Xbox originally, it just now feels weird for me to play a shooter with a with a controller. Well, it's like, I, be I tried Destiny on controller over the summer 
and I was literally the worst player ever. <laughs> like, I, I was grabbing a shotgun and a fusion rifle because I was like, I just can't aim. I'm just going to, like, point the controller at them and hope I get a kill. Like, it's I... just some <laughs> games that feel better on a controller. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. But for me, Borderlands actually feels really good on a PC. Like, the UI feels oh, like yeah. Yeah. really yeah. good on PC. 100%. Cool. Like, and that's that's, that's pretty <laughs> much it. The, there's a there's a couple of other troll questions, but uh, that's pretty much I it. I think Wolfie has <laughs> one. We didn't we didn't. What is your advice on networking for new streamers slash content creators? Did we answer that? Yeah, pretty much. I yeah, think we, we kind of went over that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Forgetting networking. The one I'm seeing is actually from um, from Legend of CK, <clears throat> where he's saying the most important or common advice he hears is to have a schedule. Uh, due to health issues, a schedule is practically impossible for him to do. How much would that hurt growth? Um, <clears throat> so anyone Can I jump, jump in, in on that? this one? Go ahead. So yeah. I, I don't think it's going to help. It's definitely going to be a hindrance, but it's not going to stop you. Like, there are a lot of very understanding and very supportive people on Twitch. There is a beautiful, beautiful community here. And if that is a reason why you can't stream consistently, as you grow your community and as you meet new people, people will be understanding of that. People will like know this is the reason why you're not streaming. If you're open about it, if you say, hey, look, I, for whatever reason, I cannot stream on a consistent schedule, but I will try and be live when I can. And you do a good job of telling people when you're going to be live and engaging with the community and making sure that they understand. Um, people will be understanding of that. Yes, it will make things more difficult. Like being consistent is a huge thing, but it's not going to be impossible and it's not going to prevent you from streaming and prevent you from mm -hmm. growing on whatever streaming platform you go for yeah yeah i'd agree it's obviously schedule like you say is, is the most important thing i am really bad at sticking to a schedule because i feel like my mood varies day on day where like some days i just really can't face streaming and then other days i'm super hyped up and excited about it and it is very difficult uh personally i i kind of to a point i used to much worse but kind of still my job can give me hours that vary hugely week on week so it's like it's all well and good me saying yep every wednesday at 5 p.m but then my work will turn around and give me a shift that ends at 7 p.m on a wednesday out of nowhere and then mm. that's it the schedule's gone and you know i think i certainly understand that for other people that we all have jobs we all have you know events that happen in our lives that make it very difficult to go out and just be totally consistent i mean if we could all do this full time that wouldn't be an issue but we have lives you know so it's um i don't it's definitely <laughs> <laughs> then stream more forehead <laughs> but i think i think the key is if you can even try and keep it to a rough a rough schedule if there's one day for sure i mean i know obviously with health issues it's maybe a bit more difficult um but just be as consistent as you can jump on when you can make sure you are very vocal on all your socials or with any communities that you're in of when you're going live if you have to cancel streams make sure you're letting people know um and it, it's not impossible i still think you can absolutely grow it just might be a a, t a touch more difficult you know yeah, yeah all right a few more questions go for it mm -hmm. we're gonna be we're gonna be finishing up here soon uh guys so any questions get them get them thrown in we'll maybe do what two or three more and then call it i think so dob said how do i balance gaming and sleep i get told three hours a day is bad the majority of times i'm fine would i mess up will that mess me up in the future depends if you're talking about gaming or sleep yeah <laughs> like if you're talking about three hours worth of sleep because yes that will fuck yeah. you up in ways yeah, that yeah, you cannot yeah. imagine like even Speak if you feel mentally fine like the toll that's going to take on your internal organs mm -hmm. and your body and like everything yeah list listen to your body <laughs> yeah speaking out I, of experience sleep sleep as mm -hmm. a minimum six hours a day because that like any any less will eventually fuck you over mm. especially yeah. when you're younger experience. as well especially when you're younger as well like as you get older you will need less and less sleep um but especially when you're young it's very important that you get enough sleep because when your body's still growing and you're still developing like your body needs to reset like your body needs time to heal and recover from the stresses of everyday life if you're not getting enough sleep it is going to mess you up like as someone who has worked night shift jobs and late shift jobs for a large part mm -hmm. of my life and is also a gaming gremlin i can tell you from experience get your sleep like i can function without it but i feel infinitesimally better when i get sleep 
So yeah. And hydrate. And hydrate. Mm. Hydrate, goddammit. Hydrate and sleep. <laughs> yeah. Anybody health. else got something? This is a health cast. So uh, Wolfie says, do you ever feel pressured to take part in new games for the popularity of like a launch of that new game? Um, speaking from experience, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, er everybody says that you need to well <clears throat> stream the popular games in order to not only grow but like be successful. And I mean, there's there's always going to be that that voice in the back of your head that says, "I need to play this game in order to grow." But I mean, I, I've went into people's streams and they just don't enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's either a they're not good at the game, which then puts pressure on them, or b they just don't like the game, and they're not like passionate about it at all. Um, yeah, I think you need to try and silence that. Um, as much as possible, you'll never, never be able to, like, Fortnite. You need to play Fortnite in order to be successful. Or you need to play like Call of Duty to be successful. All these kind of things. Um, it's gonna be one of those those topics that will never go away. Um, but you need to do you. You need to make sure that you stay true to yourself. I mean, we all play Destiny. I don't know what Destiny's at currently on Twitch, but on Mixer, it's like. 30 down on the list like one of the the top 30 popular games yeah, and uh on Twitch, so. we enjoy it and everybody can see that f whether, whether mm -hmm. it be clips i mean most of the the content that that condi puts out um is variety it's it's the same for a lot of us um but when we stream destiny we can all tell that we're having fun like a lot of fun yeah, yeah. the thing is one thing I would say, I feel like that too, that I just want to play for popular, not for popularity, but I just want to play for like, to get, you know, to be like one of the firsts, I, if you could say it like that. And so that's one thing that pissed me off, because Borderlands is like my favorite <laughs> game series of all time, but it's actually like, you need a really good PC to, to play Borderlands 3, because Borderlands 3 is very... Like I'm, uh, my PC is not bad. Like I got an i7 8700, and like dude, my graphics card could be bad. I got a 1060, but I have like my settings on medium, and sometimes uh, the game would just drop under 40 FPS sometimes. And if I would stream the same time, like I couldn't. It just would be constantly low FPS, and that's what I what really pissed me off because I was like really excited to stream Borderlands. Like at launch, since my favorite fucking game series, and I couldn't because like my PC is not good enough. So that's mm. one thing as well. That's why I'm also a lot. Of, but that's why I also have a lot of inconsistently with like streaming, because I now mostly play PC, and there's just some games that just like my PC can't handle streaming and playing at the same time, and I will need to upgrade first. Yeah. So, I mean, but I would kind of take the... Ahead, sorry. sorry, go ahead. You go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. Oh. Um, yeah, I no, would... Uh, just on the... Uh... I will out-polite you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gentleman here. Look at this. <laughs> on the on the topic of, like, you know, feeling the pressure of, of streaming a new game, I always kind of feel the opposite um, in a in a big way. Like, when, the, when a game like Borderlands, for example, I look at it, and obviously if it's a game, like, I'm super into. Destiny, something like that new expansion comes out i'm gonna be playing it um i'll probably stream but i don't necessarily feel the urge to stream because i know for a, you know a new raid comes out i know that some of the big big streamers are going to be live and they're going to be you know pulling a lot of viewership and in terms of like if you're looking at it from a purely analytical point of view the the opportunity for growth is probably lower at that point because you're going to get buried further down in the directory less people are net, are going to just stumble upon your channel it could still happen absolutely but i it kind of almost puts me off of streaming because i don't want to be jumping into destiny 2 launch day i don't want to be jumping into that and looking at my chat and being like well it's dead everybody's watching king of Thalion or whatever i don't want to be worrying about that i just want to enjoy the game because i'm hyped about it and i'm excited about it um so a lot of times on a brand new release day for a big game like that i'll just play it and not stream it and just have a good time with it and enjoy it um if it's a smaller game like one of the ones i brought up recently was no man's sky which is still a fairly big game but i don't feel like it's got the same pool as like a borderlands or a destiny 
Um, I'm much more happy to stream that because, again, I, I know that the directory will suddenly get much more populated and busy, but I feel almost a bit less pressure on that one because I don't know that community as well and, and things like that. So it, it can vary for me, certainly, but I, I oftentimes will feel the direct opposite with a new big game launching. I know that I'm not going to be topping a directory there. I'm not going to be pulling big numbers on it most likely so i just enjoy the game off stream uh at least for the first few days usually um don't know what you guys think i, I can I'd see i can see both both sides of it see i to give my point of view like i feel like i'm very much on one extreme of the end where like if i am not hyped for the game i have very very little interest in playing something just because it's new mm. like i when i first started streaming i tried out fortnite i just didn't enjoy it i tried out black ops i didn't enjoy it and i very much of the opinion now with unless i'm excited for this game and i'm really really wanting to play it i know it's gonna hurt my enjoyment of the game and my enjoyment of streaming if i'm trying to force myself to play something i don't want to play just because it's new yep. so um mm. borderlands is that happy medium where i've been so excited for this game that it's yeah. new and i can just play and play and play and play but if something else was new like i would really i'm like shadow keeps going to be the same with destiny but beyond that any new title there's just not that motivation for me at all i just i i think to the core of what it's going to do to me and my enjoyment while i'm streaming and i just think it's going to take too much away that it's not going to be worthwhile me doing that and pursuing that avenue so yeah agreed if it's not a game i don't enjoy i, I would a game that i'm going to play anyways might as well like stream it at the, the day comes out you know mm. absolutely and I, I think like there's there's obviously certain cases where yes i'm gonna want to play these games on stream but to java's point i didn't pick up and start streaming borderlands because i i'm just not into borderlands it's never been a game i've played it's never been yeah. something that i'm particularly excited about because i could act like i'm excited about it i could get involved in the hype train that everyone else is but like deep down it doesn't interest me that much and it would come off as disingenuous is that the word yep 100%, yeah. 100%. and i don't i don't want to seem fake i would rather stick true to myself and what i'm gonna enjoy same as java says i think that that being genuine is it's so important to everything we've talked about tonight um mm. but i mean i can understand the pressure uh, point of view where you know if you know everybody's gonna be on this it's like maybe i should stream it but then you know will i get viewers if everyone's streaming it and there's there's that back and forth you know it's mm. difficult um Anyone got any more points? Have you got any more questions? Anything at all? I really want to go for Dobbs' question here where he's like, what's your guys' opinion on streamers that change because of, let's say, selling out? Um, I think a really important... like Selling out gets thrown around a lot. I think the most important thing, the way I define selling out, is you're compromising your beliefs or your morals in exchange for something else. I think that ultimately, and this will apply more to larger streamers than it will to someone like myself, but if I see a streamer do something for a business decision sometimes it's ultimately a business decision mm. like if they are not compromising themselves or their morals or their beliefs to do this it's not really selling out like yeah. for them especially as a full-time streamer making an income working as a, as a business there is a business part to it as you continue to grow as a streamer and i think it's it gets thrown around a lot to say oh this guy sold out it's like well he's still the same person he's still doing the same thing he's made a business decision but has it compromised a moral, ethical, or personal code? If that's not the case, I think as long as they're not deeply changing who they are for the sake of some short-term gain, um, yeah, that's kind of my view. I think yeah. one, of, w one of the biggest events that's recently just happened that perfectly situates that, that question is Ninja. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Nin Ninja moved. He not only sacrificed a bunch of money, a bunch of viewership and a bunch of quote unquote clout um but he seems to have made that business decision to become happy like he didn't like where he was on twitch and he was no no offense to anybody else he was arguably one of the, the most popular streamers ever that it doesn't mean what platform he has the biggest influence than yeah, anybody else and Unle unless you're talking about like the kardashian twins and all that bullshit but i would say as a streamer he is probably one of the most influential people. Yeah, he's that probably we have. like the most influential. Like he's he like you gotta like take in point how in what a short time he went massive as well. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, Fortnite came out a year ago, and now he's like what twenty million, like no, I mean, or even more, maybe like thirty million overall social media following. Like that's insane. Yeah, and I think a lot of people said that he was selling out, but to perfectly quote Jabba. I don't think he changed his beliefs or his morals at all. I think he wasn't happy. And I feel like a lot of people go in into streaming with the mindset of selling out and they will do anything to be on top. But you will find the, the genuine people that just want to grow and, and be successful. Um, it's it's very hard to tell who is going to be like selling out, but you'll never know. You will they never know. I mean, everyone knows how Ninja, like, was on stream before, but, like, let's be real. If you were in Ninja's sh growth at the time, you would go family-friendly as well, for example. Oh, like, for sure. If it just, this is for the gain as yeah. well, like, I would go family-friendly. Like, I wouldn't say anything bad anymore. You know, he was different before. We, he we knew who, the, who his audience was. He yeah, knew he knows, that he was streaming. He played, yeah, Fortnite, like, you know. <laughs> Kids play Fortnite, obviously. So, so <laughs> most mostly kids. There's <laughs> other people as well. I like it's mostly kids. Let's be real. So, you know, well, I he almost done the same. he almost had a bit of a responsibility to do that. I think obviously it's his channel. He yeah. can run it how he wants. But I think when you are suddenly thrust into the limelight like that, and you are the face of the platform, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and like you say, you know your audience. I feel like. If he hadn't it's like a responsibility isn't it i feel like yeah it was the right thing to do like i feel like if if you're i mean if it was me and you know again like all of us if you're in that position it's amazing right and you're probably so grateful that you're there i think the least you can do in that scenario is to try and i don't know to try and make it so that it's friendly for people to watch it's not going to cause problems because i mean again with the amount of or maybe the average age of his viewers you know it could have upset parents and all sorts of stuff if he's saying things that he shouldn't be saying again i do 100 percent think it's his channel and he can do what he wants with it but i feel like it was a good move to just because yep. i mean he can just stop swearing but it doesn't change who he is you know exactly. what i mean like he's still the same guy um so yeah i mean i i i, I think it almost he almost he kind of was he was probably advised to by a lot of people but i think he was almost uh almost obliged to to kind of suit that audience when that's the audience that he's got yeah yeah totally agree um do you want to finish on one last question if you have one let's do it we do um wolfie says uh, if there was one thing that you could change about twitch or any other streaming platform uh, what would you change um personally for me on mixer um it's everybody is heavily focused on console and to touch on Ninja, he, he's pretty much changed that. He's brought a lot of PC players across. Um, so that, that, that's the biggest gripe for me. For Twitch, uh, from pretty much an outsider point of view, I wish they treated each and every streamer fairly. And I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm going to like yeet a cat yeah. behind me right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they, they need to like treat everybody the same and it just doesn't happen i mean the controversy yeah. that happened with tifu saying a, obviously a very bad word nothing happened nothing and and yeah. it seems crazy it it almost feels like you have no security um because the like the tablet's not in front of you the, there isn't rules that everybody follows it just seems like everybody can just throw it in there um and not get banned for saying really subjective shit or doing very poor things on on stream it's insane yeah it's yeah. a really hard question i think like i i need to think about this because i don't know other than what you just said there's surely things that we could change but i don't know what it would be discoverability for for twitch yes in my it, opinion. That, yeah exactly yeah. it's just always the same streamers it's really hard to gain growth on twitch as well oh yeah they, you know, they, like you said. they did add a new discoverability re recently there's like a it's really hard to find though well see here's the difficulty because they added a recommended for you search function right which but, is bullshit by the way well but see that's this is the <laughs> thing is how how are you recommending streams to me are you recommending it purely based on the games they play because i watch streamers play so many different games 
you know I, i'll watch kibbles if he's playing fortnite like you know not like kibbles really plays fortnite but the point is <laughs> like, if it's a streamer that i like i don't care what game they're watching i don't want suddenly a million fortnite streamers being recommended to me right it's i don't know how they're basing it but i and i think a lot of people are the same watch a channel or a streamer because of the person a lot of the time so how do they how do they find that and recommend me streamers similar to java or streamers similar to kibbles surely they're just basing it on the games i watch which to me yeah, doesn't like work looking at mine right now it doesn't seem to make yeah it sense doesn't work got diablo 3 apex sims 4 warframe and overwatch yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah it's it, the people where do these watch, people come from <laughs> it's the people I, I i watch the people because i are on stream and not for the games so i just watch the streamers i like and most of them are just variety streamers as well so like it doesn't really help much for me personally hmm. but yeah it just seems like a weird feature that twitch is like thrown together to try and almost silence the we don't like help smaller streamers get yeah. bigger and all this kind of stuff i mean mix has got a a section where it's up and coming so if you've got under a certain amount of followers or viewers it'll then throw you in there and that's right on the front page um but i feel like twitch is recommended is just insane um me me as a mixer streamer i spend a lot of time on twitch i would probably say more time watching twitch like watching streamers than i do on mixer uh, and i'm looking at mine right now and fucking ASMR is there. I've <laughs> never watched an ASMR streamer <laughs> in my life. And I'm like, why is that there? Like, what is the algorithm that's been thrown together to, like, do this? It just seems, I don't know, very janky and clunky. And, See, I don't know. Weirdly enough, I can't actually complain with mine. I, I don't know why, but when I open mine, there's Destiny streamers in there, there's Borderlands, there's people of a similar community size with a lot of streamers I usually watch. There's a lot of, other, like, I don't know what the algorithm is, but at least to me, there's a Battlefield 5 streamer in there and someone playing GTA, but mm. I recognize the names of people I've seen around the community. So I'm not sure what it is that defines that algorithm. And I feel like I'm definitely in the minority because I hear a lot of people complain about it, but I feel like I might be in the minority saying it looks like it's bringing up streamers I want to find. But I've definitely, like there's been moments where I've looked through that list and gone, oh yeah, I know this person. I've seen them around in chats. I didn't know they streamed and I've yeah. discovered it that way. But again, I guess I have the, I don't want to say blessing or fortune. I pretty much play Destiny and watch Destiny. So that yeah. community being the size it is and being as tight knit as it is, I think that definitely helps to make those connections for sure. myself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and just to be clear, I'm not necessarily saying that it's purely based on games. I'm just saying I don't know how the algorithm works. And I feel like it's a very difficult task to try and capture what it is about a stream that I like and then recommend me more stuff to that stream. Yeah. Uh, I just oh, think it it's a difficult easy, job. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I don't know how they fix it. I really, it's, uh, they're trying and I completely appreciate that they're trying. And I mean, I've had the odd person come in and say, yeah, you were in my recommended. So it's like, I know that I, I my channel must be being recommended to at least some people. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how they how they solve that problem. It's it's especially with a platform this large as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's the thing. Uh, as far as changes for me, I think the discoverability is a big thing. It's the only other thing I can think of is the the sheer amount of ads that we're getting on Twitch nowadays. Um, and again, I don't know how they fix that. I don't know how they solve that problem. But I don't know if you guys noticed, but like if I'm jumping between streams, I'm often getting an ad every single time. And it's yep. like 10 yep. seconds between ads and I'm getting them constantly. So that's the only well, thing I, I can do. I get, I get ads all the time, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do anything about it. Did you know they've now introduced that to Mixer? Did they? Did they brought ads on? Yep. That was always going to happen. Do streamers yeah. get revenue from that as well? Yep. So that's any nice. partnered streamer, uh, you will sit through an ad. I think, I think the maximum is like 20, 30 seconds. But if you sub to them, it's very similar to the way Twitch used to be. If you sub to them, you don't get any ads. I don't know if that's changed or not. Um, but I think <laughs> it's going to be one of those things that you will never be able to get away from. Um, mm. Twitch is owned by Amazon. Let's be honest. They will do anything to make any money. And it's a smart business decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody on Twitch is going to sit there and watch, watch an ad to then watch the favorite streamer. It doesn't matter how long the ad is. They're going to sit there, mute the tab or whatever um but it's it's insane 
yeah, like Wolfie says, um, you use Prime, you get no ads. It but just so happens to. that, yeah, yeah, they took so that away. It's, so <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, it's I think the uh, worst thing is when I'm trying to raid somebody. Yeah, and I'll forget to pop yeah. them up first. So it's like I raid them, and then I have to watch the ads. Like, ah, uh, okay, oh crap. <laughs> yeah. And by then, yeah. Well, it, it's not though. That's that was the on thing. me, but. It's it, poor planning on me. <laughs> uh, conflicting. Like, I, I don't think that's poor planning on your behalf. I think it's just Twitch's way of just, as soon as you go in there, bang, there's an ad, I'm making money. Um, But I, I don't know. I don't think you could ever get away from it. It's a business at the end of the day. Well, then it, it certainly like, does feel weird, though, as a streamer, and you get a raid, and you're like, oh, hey, welcome in, everyone. Wait, there's going to be a pre-roll ad, and it's going to yeah. watch out. It's about 20 <laughs> yeah. seconds left. So what's the ad like? How's it going for everyone? I hope you're really enjoying this advert. Is it something you're interested in? If it's The Boys, great TV show. Not an ad right now, by the way, but really recommend checking it out, guys. I love that show. Brilliant. Um, like, yeah, you kind of have that weird moment for 30 seconds. Then you're like, and scene. Like, it, it is an odd break to the genuine nature of a broadcast. You feel like you have to be, I don't know. It's, it's quite, that those pre-roll ads on raids and hosts, I think is something that's definitely up for discussion. Yeah. I think Ooh. when just opening a stream for the first time, especially you say, usually when you're opening a stream, it is for a streamer you want to watch. You'll put up with the pre-roll ad to get into the stream. Yep. But it is a very interesting thing on raids and hosts. I'm not quite sure yeah. what to do about that. So as Wizard was just saying there, he thinks ads should give the streamer a small percentage of the money from the ad. So that is something that happens for partners on Twitch. Mm -hmm. yep. And weirdly, right? So like, again, I'm, I'm a big consumer of YouTube content as well. I don't mind watching ads on youtubers because i know that that's where they get their their money from if, if it's a big youtuber and likewise if i'm watching a partnered streamer i'm not going to complain about an ad because at least i know i'm helping to support that streamer without having to break open my wallet right but yeah. for a lot of smaller streamers that i do watch it's just an ad and it's all just going to twitch and amazon yeah and it's like okay fine i want to support the platform i want the platform to succeed but i don't know i just wish there was a way to like reduce that down so you're getting one ad every 30 minutes or something like that so you're not getting them every time you change streams yep. because it but drives me insane <laughs> for for twitch as a platform to support then you think about how many affiliates there are on twitch how many people are streaming how many of them do you think are profitable for twitch as a company like for them to support the infrastructure and everything to have people to be able to stream as an affiliate and get the opportunity that's where the trade-off has to come in yeah with you know you know the affiliates not getting a share of the revenue but at the same time from a purely business standpoint twitch is doing is going out of their way to give people this opportunity to have this entry into the platform and to grow from there so yeah it's it's a very very interesting discussion very nuanced and for this late in the podcast i feel like <laughs> yeah it's not what we're gonna be able to go into in depth but i would love to come back and talk about this again like, yeah i'm depth. gonna i'm gonna write that that down and it mm. could even be uh guys if you hit an uh, exclamation point question uh make sure you fill that up for next time uh we obviously have covered pretty much everything but like java says i don't think this is this is a two-hour discussion easily <laughs> yeah um yeah. it's gonna be insane all right you want to end it there then guys yeah no, i think yeah. we're all good excellent does anyone else have anything they want to throw in before we do our little outro i don't think I'm so good. i think i'm good yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm beautiful Follow all right guys handsome mofos <laughs> yeah. yeah what we'll do we will we'll each go around and sign off um just well we'll start with yourself java if anything you want to plug where can people find you tell them all the things um if you're looking to find me as you can see my link to my twitch channels in my chat i'm also on youtube occasionally and uh you can also find me on twitch and uh through my discord if you go to the twitch uh through twitter and through my discord if you go to the twitch channel a bunch of links are there i usually stream regularly weekday evenings and due to work occasionally on the um on the weekends it's a bunch of destiny content currently a bunch of borderlands content as well and um yeah that is pretty much me thank you very much for having me on the podcast it's been a pleasure absolutely um manu you can find me on twitch same as it says on screen that guy card um on twitter you should find me the same uh just my ad is a bit different it's just dad underscore guy underscore card um but yeah other than that that's where you can find me and i enjoyed episode zero of our podcast <laughs> i'm looking forward to it awesome cyber 
Yep, uh, you will be able to find me at mixer.com forward slash cyberwolf. I stream on uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, mainly playing at Destiny, but some Apex in there. Trying to uh, go pro in like 50 years, so uh, make sure you check that out. Um, you can find the links from uh, everything to each social media on uh, on Mixer. Cool. And uh, Kibbles. Yeah, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash the mighty kibbles i stream monday wednesday and friday i also upload videos on youtube uh tuesday and saturday <laughs> and then on twitter i'm a duh mighty kibbles because it was one letter too long for the hand okay cool yeah. and uh right. for myself my name's connie fly find me on twitch.tv slash connie fly seems there um YouTube as well, the same. Uh, Twitter is Connifly, but with two Ys because of reasons. Um, thank you so much for watching the show with us today, guys. Crazy turnout, honestly. I'm very surprised, but it's been a pleasure. Thank you to my co-hosts here for the excellent discussions. Um, make sure you follow the podcast Twitter account there. The link is in chat. It is Zero Strategy Pod. I have done the link wrong in chat, so don't do that one. Um, <laughs> but, do that one too. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, these things happen. You try and you, over prepare. You do this to yourself, Conde. You I have spent roasted by yourself. I have spent the last several days obsessing over every detail to try and get this right, and I just realized I've done the link wrong. Uh, Twitter at Zero Strategy Pod. Make sure and follow it. Um, we're going to be using that a little more. Uh, where we can to try and uh, you know get ideas from you guys questions things like that um yeah <laughs> i uh i again absolutely thank you so much for spending your time with us we are going to be back at some point like i say we may not always have these five but there will always be some variation of us and maybe guests from time to time um but i hope you guys enjoyed i certainly had a ton of fun um so yeah we're gonna call it there thank you